A couple of days ago, Overwatch saw a developer update showing some of the balance changes that players could expect going into Season 5. A lot of these changes seem to be very well received. We have some Junker Queen nerfs, some Life Weaver buffs he might actually be useful, as well as nerfs to some snipers, which while some people are complaining about, honestly I do not like snipers in Overwatch 2. I always thought of Overwatch as being a more unique first person shooter style game where you have a lot of focus on mobility and different unique weapon types. So it was kind of just boring to have just standard sniper characters that just insta-kill people that don't have a lot of counterplay. If you wanted snipers in the game, there's a hundred other first-person shooter games that have snipers. I think the one thing I have to say on this is that we still don't know if snipers will be very bad after the changes go through, just because this is a developer update post. It is not a set of patch notes. We don't know what the specifics of these changes will be. I would be surprised if these are the only changes that some of these heroes receive. Like, I don't think they're just going to straight up nerf Widow's range without buffing her in some other ways. Like, they could nerf her range, but then buff how long it takes for her to charge up a shot that it doesn't take as long for her to charge up a killing blow in medium range. The same thing is true for Hanzo. I'm not sure what specifically they might change for him, but they easily could just decrease the pullback time for his bow so he can fire more arrows. We just have to wait until we see the actual patch notes to know what will happen. And I feel like that's important going forward is a lot of people have seemed to just be saying, oh, these are nerfs or buffs. And the reality is we don't know what the changes are actually going to be and what other changes that characters will be getting to compensate for the ones they're talking about. But I don't really want to talk about all the other changes. The one thing that I want to talk about is the change to crowd control, because this marks a big departure from how Blizzard was approaching balancing crowd control abilities from Overwatch 1. So just quickly, I'll just read out their whole statement they gave about crowd control. So it reads, Lastly, I'd like to talk a bit about crowd control abilities in-game. When we launched Overwatch 2, we made some significant changes to our combat model. The biggest was the sift from 6v6 to 5v5. A part of that change was to remove most of the crowd control abilities from our damage and support heroes. Overall, we think that this was a positive change for the game. At times, the original game felt like you were in a pinball machine, but we have a lot of high mobility heroes in the roster, and a team can't always rely on their tank to take them on. So we're softening our approach here. We don't want to return to the state the game was in previously, but we feel like there's more room for a CC, especially soft CC, in our lineup. We'll be making changes to both May and Cassidy for Season 5 with this in mind. May's Endothermic Blaster will be updated. The primary fire will slow targets, but it will also build up to an effect that will apply a much larger slow for 1.5 seconds. For players of the original game, this will feel familiar to the way her old weapon worked. Cassidy's Magnetic Grenade will also get updated to deal less damage, as well as applying an effect that slows and blocks movement abilities. Now, the Cassidy change is interesting, but that's honestly a topic I want to cover in a whole different video. I'll hopefully get that up tomorrow, so please subscribe if you're interested in that, hearing about the failures of how they tried to rework it without CC, and then now they're giving up and they're putting CC back onto Cassidy's Magnetic Grenade. But the one I want to focus on is May, because May is already a hero that's in a very good position. Cassidy, not so much. Cassidy is one of the worst win rate heroes in the game, especially once you get up in the rankings, he just gets worse and worse. But May is almost top three, top four at every single rank, I believe, in terms of win rate. So he doesn't need any buffs, and I feel like a lot of people realize that and have been talking about why are they buffing May. But again, as I said earlier, we don't know what the full scope of these changes are. We don't know if they're also going to be drastically lowering her damage output to make up for this new effect on her primary. And I feel like that's the key thing here is that depending on how they change it, it could easily make her worse than she is now. May in her current state still has wall. Wall is insane utility. 
her best ability by far. And with her damage on her primary being pretty good, she's able to follow up on a wall on squishy targets even by herself. She doesn't need to rely on teammates to deal the heavy lifting in terms of damage on any targets that she walls off. Unless it's a tank, of course. Which is kind of where I'm concerned for these changes, because if they do nuke her damage, then she just gets put more into this bubble of being a DPS that's mainly just super utility and not really anything else because one thing i saw floating around was that her damage would be dropped to 55 damage per second which i feel like would just make her much worse than she is now but again we don't know until we get patch notes that actually so what the changes will be but i just want to talk about crowd control and why i do not like a lot of these changes for overwatch 2. so as was mentioned in the blog post one of the biggest reasons behind adding crowd control back was to counter high mobility heroes. This was one of the primary reasons for crowd control effects existing in the first place, because mobility is incredibly strong. Dive has almost been a meta comp, or at least a very strong playable comp for the entirety of Overwatch's life cycle, because of just how strong mobility was. But what ended up being a killing blow to Overwatch 1 and the big reason for a lot of the changes going to Overwatch 2 was because while crowd control abilities were meant to counter highly mobile DPS heroes in particular, they mainly ended up just being dumped into tanks for guaranteed value. Because you could throw a stun at a tracer and she could still blink around it if she is expecting it or gets the read. So you could use it and still not get value out of it. Or it could be just thrown into a Reinhardt who can't do anything about it and just flash him. And this just led to tank becoming a punching bag role that people didn't want to play because it just felt like you just get Stunned, stunned, knocked back, stunned, knocked back, slept, stunned, etc. All while being discorded and it felt like you almost couldn't even play the game. This is what led to Overwatch 1 queue times being so bad near the end of its life cycle. is because people just didn't want to play tank because it was not that fun to be a punching bag. And to make it worse, we then entered double sealed meta as a sort of counter to all of the stuns because you can't be stunned if you're camping behind two barriers. But double sealed was also not that fun to play. I'm sure people would have wanted to play Ryan Zarya, but the thing is if you pick Ryan Zarya, you're just gonna get flashed, slept, discorded, knocked back, and you just don't get to do anything ever. <laughs> so double sealed was just a hard meta as a necessity against all of that. And these changes are just going to do that again, because a lot of these crowd controls ideas are going to end up being used in the same way. In particular, slows. Slows are incredibly bad as being used to counter high mobility heroes. And I don't know why Blizzard has been obsessed with slow effects in Overwatch 2, because so many characters have either gotten slow effects added to their kit, or new characters have had them as part of their abilities. In Overwatch 1, I believe that the only slow effects in the game were held by Mei and Symmetra's turrets. That's really all that I can think of. And now going to Overwatch 2, they had Doomfist had a slow on his slam that got removed, and he still has it on his ultimate. Sojourn E had a slow as part of it. Ramatra's Ravenous Vortex has a slow as part of it. And now they're going back and they're trying to make May's slow stronger when it was in a pretty fair spot before, I think, because it was just a 40% slow reduction that didn't build up to add anything. It was mainly just there to keep in the flavor of her kit because she's an ice character. She throws ice at people. It makes sense that it would slow and that was a big defining part of her character in Overwatch 1. Even if they removed completely freezing people, the slow was just there to you know, keep it in line with her character. And again, it still made her strong in some matchups. Genzi, she was really good against because the slow made it harder for her to escape if she got in close range of people because she doesn't have any mobility herself. And in particular, I say Genzi because Genzi can't deflect uh, the freeze like he can with other abilities because Mei's primary is technically a beam which goes straight through deflect. But the big problem I have with adding slows as a form of CC is that they will never be used to counter mobile characters, because mobile characters are almost completely unaffected by them. Let's take a look at Ramatra's Ravenous Vortex for a moment. This was an ability that 
when they showed it off, they were like, oh, it will drag players down if they're in the air, so it counters Pharah. How many people have ever caught a Pharah in a Ravenous Vortex? The range on it is so small that you almost never get any Pharahs with it. The only time I think I've ever caught a character in it that was in the air was a Sigma who had just started to use Gravitic Flux. And the only reason that I caught him with it is because I had already thrown it towards him because that's what you do with these abilities now. You're just back to throwing them at the enemy tank because they don't have the mobility to get out of it quickly. Because the thing with slows is that Tracer, Genzi, Cassidy even, so many DPS heroes just have a movement ability that instantly takes them out of range of the slow effect. They are completely unaffected by them. Instead, all of these slow effects are just being used on the enemy tanks, just like in Overwatch 1. Because tanks, a lot of them at least, don't have the mobility to instantly get them out of these abilities. You could also technically throw them at supports, because a lot of supports don't have the mobility to get out of them either. But usually supports play in the back line, which is very far away from the range of a lot of these abilities. If you throw that at the enemy back line, you can't follow up on something like Sigma's Ravenous Vortex. So you just suck it at the tank every single time. I remember when Overwatch was new, I had a friend that played DPS. And I'd always talk to him about how I hated the slow on Sojo and E. And it was not that fun to play against. And he didn't understand it until he played support for a few games. And he started to realize, oh yeah, this sucks a lot more on support than it does on playing a DPS hero. Just because he played a lot of Tracer. If you ever get into a Sojourn E on Tracer, you just blink out of it instantly. There is no punishment for fast or mobile characters when the effect is just a slow. Because so much of their mobility comes from these abilities that they have that can just instantly get them from point A to point B really quickly. When he started playing support against Sojourn, he started to realize that it was incredibly annoying to have the slow effect on Sojourn's E. In addition to the fact that it did like 200 damage over the course of the entire duration of the ability. And that's kind of why I hate Overwatch 2's new approach to crowd control. They're just going ham with all of these slow effects that aren't going to do anything against these mobility heavy characters that they're supposed to be countering and are instead just going to be used against the enemy tanks and supports and other heroes that don't need crowd control to counter them, but it's still just going to be thrown against them all the time because all of the characters that crowd control is meant to be trying to counter and make the fight easier against just are so easily able to get out of them. This is why the one effect, the one change I actually liked in this new update is the change to Cassidy's Magnetic Grenade. Now this is a change that I actually wanted before, but I wanted it to be put onto Brigitte's stun instead. Kind of like a disorientation effect where if she sealed best you, instead of being stunned and losing your mobility, you just get a slight slow applied to you and you wouldn't be able to use any movement abilities for like half a second. This way you still have control over your character and you're still able to do stuff. Say for instance, if you were playing Tracer, you would probably still be able to use Recall. You just couldn't just instantly blink if you get hit with Sealed Bass and be basically free from it. It would just force out cooldowns and it would not be a nightmare to play against as other characters because all you're going to be doing is you're going to be slowed. Other characters that don't rely on their abilities for insane movement won't be as impacted by these types of movement ceiling abilities. Unlike the 1 million different slow effects that we're getting now, an effect that just blocks movement abilities will be the exact opposite, where with a slow effect, the very mobile heroes are basically unaffected because they just have abilities that get them out for free. Meanwhile, slower characters that don't have movement abilities are incredibly impacted by slow effects because they're stuck in them for a much longer time period. Meanwhile, with effects that block movement abilities, slower characters that don't rely on movement abilities are not affected much at all just because they don't have movement abilities in the first place or their movement abilities aren't important to their kit. Meanwhile, highly mobile heroes, such as Tracer, will actually feel the effect 
of these abilities as a counter to them because they can't just blink away for free and stop being under the effect of it like they could a slow. And I think that it's much more fair than something like a complete stun. I don't like stuns either, but a stun would be you have no control over your character, including not being able to use a movement abilities, compared to these movement ability blocking effects where it's now you have full control over your character, you just can't use the movement ability. And I think that's a lot more fair for both sides in this scenario, that the Tracer or other highly mobile DPS still has the potential to fight back, but the character that's meant to be trying to deal with them isn't just having their abilities basically be completely ignored when they are abilities that are primarily meant to counter these highly mobile heroes. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. Tomorrow I'll try to get done a video talking about Cassidy's Magnetic Grenade, because it is a very interesting experiment in trying to make an ability to counter heroes like Tracer and Genzi, but without the stun attached to it. But as you can see with these changes, I feel it's very appropriate to say that that experiment was a complete failure, so I'll go over it and why it did not work out in the way that I'm sure that Blizzard wanted it to. So yeah, until next time, see ya.